Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Church of the Holy Spirit. For those of you who are here in the nave, those watching online, the first Sunday after Easter, uh, what we call Low Sunday typically, right? But uh, I tell you what, God is... Um, God has got some interesting things for us today. I'm going to be preaching on the authority of the believer, and we're going to be praying for one another today. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get ready and wake up in the spirit. Let's stand and sing. Himself in light, 
darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our I wander 
softly spoken word my conscience a reminder of forgiveness that I need who is this king of glory who offers it to me who is this 
this King of Angels, O oh, blessed Prince of Peace, revealing things of heaven and all its mysteries. Spirits ever longing for his grace on which to stand. Who is this King of glory, Son of God and Son of Man? His name is Jesus, precious Lord Almighty, the King of my heart, the King of glory. Who is this King of glory? With strength and majesty, and wisdom beyond measure, the gracious King. Lord of earth and heaven, the creator of all things, he is the king of glory, he's everything to me. God, you are the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, the creator of all things, the one who redeemed us and called us by name. You're the one who sanctifies us, Lord. You're the one who gives us authority and power that you delegate to us to bring your kingdom in. Oh, God, we worship you. Let, let our praises be as incense before your throne, we pray. Oh, God, we pray that you would come with your manifest <coughs> presence and settle on the praises of your people. Come in gentleness, come. Peace. Come with Easter joy, Lord God. Come with wonder at the resurrection from the dead. Come, Lord God, with greater faith to believe you for all you want to do in us, to heal broken bodies, to set us free from captivity in our minds, in our bodies, in our spirits. Oh God, come. Build up your people this day in our most holy faith. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed be God. The Lord be with you. Let's pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. 
all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We're going to pray a blessing over the children. Um, I did um, uh, tell some of you that there was uh, junior and senior high Sunday school uh, today, but I was mistaken. So uh, junior and senior high kids stay in the service today. Uh, but we will, uh, but the elementary age children, there's Miss Debbie in the back. Wave your hand, Miss Debbie. She's awesome. She loves your kids. And uh, she'd love to just receive them for age-appropriate instruction. No matter how old your kids are, would you please place a hand on them? And uh, if they're not next to you, would you please uh, just hold them in your hearts while we pray? Lord, thank you for the gift and heritage of children. Thank you for how, oh God, you raise up the next generation of those who know you and love you and serve you. Lord, we need your help. We need others to come alongside, Lord God, to speak life, to speak truth, to speak love into our children's lives. We pray, God, that as the, the little ones uh, go apart to learn more about you, Lord, that they would get a, a clearer picture of who you are and how loved they are. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, elementary school kids are dismissed. And we'll have our first reading. Good morning. Good morning. A reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things has, God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel reading. Gospel of Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. This reading is from 19. The Lord now chose 72 other disciples and sent them ahead in pairs to all the towns and places he planned to visit. These were his instructions to them. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest and ask him to send more workers into his fields. Now go and remember that I am sending you out as lambs among wolves. Don't take any money with you, nor a traveler's bag, nor an extra pair of sandals, and don't stop to greet anyone on the road. 
Whenever you enter someone's house, first say, may God's peace be on this house. If those who live there are peaceful, the blessing will stand. If they are not, the blessing will return to you. Don't move around from home to home. Stay in one place, eating and drinking what they provide. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality because those who work deserve their pay. If you enter a town that welcomes you, eat whatever is set before you. Heal the sick and tell them the kingdom of God is near you now. When the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to Jesus, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Come, Holy Spirit, come as the fire that burns away misconceptions. Come as the wind that blows and brings, <clears throat> brings the Ruach, the Spirit of God in greater measure. Come, Holy Spirit, come life-giving Spirit. Come, Spirit, of power and might. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, a while ago, I was out driving, and uh, I came to an intersection uh, after a storm, a pretty bad storm, and uh, the, the traffic light at the corner of Wax Pool and uh, Loudoun County Parkway had just um, stopped functioning. And so there's a policeman there, you know, one of the Loudoun County sheriffs with his brown uniform on. Uh, and uh, you could see his sheriff's car parked to the side there with the blue light flashing. But he was directing traffic. And so he would, uh, he would put his hand out like this and, um, and people would stop. And then he'd say, well, go on like this way. And then people would go. You see, now, traffic cops don't have the physical power to stop ongoing traffic, do they? No, they don't. But they do have authority, a certain kind of authority, a governmental authority that is invested in them as officers of the law. And he's wearing his uniform, and so we recognize this, and so we gladly comply. Now, the word authority in the Greek, in the New Testament, is the word in uh, exousia, and it means the right to command obedience. It's also the right to enforce obedience and to make decisions for others. Another word for it um, is the word jurisdiction. That's a Latin word, and we learned in law school that uh, jurisdiction means the right to say. Okay, so you've got, if you've got jurisdiction, then you've got authority in an area. Now, the word power, we understand to mean the ability to accomplish something, but authority means the right to do it. You see the distinction between power and authority. But of course, authority carries with it its own kind of power. I want to encourage you to pull out your sermon leaflet insert. There's an outline there, and we're here at, to fill in the blank for point number one. Jesus' authority is for all of us. Could you say that with me? Jesus' authority is for all of us. Thanks be to God. You and I have been given authority by the King of Kings himself, 
in the spiritual realm. Like that traffic cop in the governmental realm, you and I have been given authority by the Lord. We have authority over curses, hexes, and spells. Can I hear an amen? amen. We have authority over demons, over Klingons, over powers uh, of the world. Can I hear an amen? We have also been given authority over sickness and disease and injury. Can I hear an amen? <clears throat> now, we may have been given authority, and of course we have, but we may not, ex we have been given authority, but we may not experience much power as we pray for those things. I believe that one of the reasons that we don't see more spiritual power, the supernatural power of God in our lives, in our church here, is because too many of us do not, simply do not understand the authority that Jesus has given to each one of us. Either that or, even if we know it, we don't confidently walk in his authority. Once we understand our authority in Christ, several things happen. We're going to have greater faith to believe that God can accomplish things even through broken vessels like you and me. We are going to pray more frequently for things that seem impossible. We are going to see God do more because we pray more and we pray with greater faith. Does that sound good to you? Good, all right. I want, I want us to, if you want to open your Bible to Luke chapter 10, uh, we're going to be going uh, through that, and not all of it, but that's going to be the main scripture I'm going to be using. And it says in uh, Luke 10, um, verse 1, that Jesus appointed 72 others to go, <clears throat> and two by two ahead of them into the towns where he would visit later. Their charge was to declare the kingdom and to heal the sick. Verse 9. And the 72 were astonished to see God do great miracles with their own hands. They said, verse 17, Lord, when they came back, they said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Notice that the 72 in uh, Luke chapter 10 are called others. And the reason they're called others is because back in Luke chapter 9, Jesus had sent out the 12 apostles on a similar mission uh, to do pretty much the same thing. But now uh, we've got the others. When Jesus um, sent them, both the 12 and the 72, he gave them power and authority over evil spirits to heal and to witness. I want you to notice that Jesus gives this power and this authority to ordinary people. He gives that authority and power to everyone who's willing to go on mission for him. That's the context here. He gave them authority and power when they're on mission. So notice that it's not just authority and power that he gives to the inner circle. It's not just the 12. It's not just to, uh, to, to prophets, to trained prayer ministers. These people were astonished at what God did uh, through them. Now, the round number of 70 is a very significant number in the Bible. I could give you several uh, examples. I'm just going to give you one. So in Genesis chapter 10, you will, you will see that there is a catalog of the nations of the earth. And those nations, the Gentile nations, number 70. So that is part of the reason why Jesus chose this number of people that he was going to be sending out. You see, he wanted us to understand and to get it that he's talking about everybody, all of the nations. Seven is a perfect number in the scriptures, and 70 also um, is, but it, it means all of us. It's a symbol, not only for all of them at that time, but for you and me, all those who would hear the message. Now, you may say, wait a minute, 
Maybe he gives authority to you, Clancy, but I'm not so sure that he gives authority to me. Well, it is true that I do have a certain authority as a pastor, uh, as an elder, priest um, of this church, pastor, okay, by virtue of my office. I have a special authority that I've been given to absolve you of your sins and to lead this congregation uh, spiritually. Even so, when it comes to the authority in Christ to heal the sick or to cast out demons, you have the same authority that I have been given. How many of you know that's good news? That's really good news because everybody gets to play. You may say, but Clancy, you know, I don't walk in the same power that the 72 walked in. Well, you know, welcome to the human race, neither do I, okay? <laughs> you may say, well, people don't always get healed when I pray for them. Sometimes I sense like maybe there's something demonic happening here and I tell it to scat and it doesn't always go away. Why is that if I really have this authority? Well, we'll get to uh, at the end of my message, some of the reasons for that. But first, let's look at what the authority of the believer looks like. Okay? Point number two. Learn to pray with authority. Say this with me. Learn to pray with authority. We can use our God-given authority when we pray, but frankly, most of us don't. When we pray, most of us pray intercessory prayers, which move from earth up to heaven. So we pray this way all the time in our liturgy. We pray for forgiveness. We pray thanksgiving. We pray for our needs and the needs of the whole world. Uh, the Lord told us to pray this way. He said, when you pray, say. Okay? Um, so we're asking God for things. That's petitioner, petitionary prayer or intercessory prayer. When we ask for ourselves, it's a petition. When we ask for others, we're interceding for them. Hear me very, very clearly. That's a great way to pray. <laughs> I'm not saying there's something wrong with that way to pray. What I'm saying is there's another way to pray that most of us have not walked into for a variety of reasons, some of which that we will explore, but that there is power in this other kind of praying. Now, the prayer of command, also called authoritative prayer by Richard Foster in his book, Prayer, excellent book, that is praying from heaven to earth. So intercessory prayer is praying from earth to heaven, saying, God, please help us. And command prayers, authoritative prayer, is praying from heaven to earth. We bring the resources of heaven to bear on our earthly problems. It's heaven invading earth prayer downward to establish the kingdom of God in this realm. Now, the kingdom of God just means the rule and reign of God. And when God moves in power, Jesus has said several times, you know, when you see that, the kingdom of God has come among you. You get a glimpse of the rule and reign of God when you see him do something that only God could do. Jesus said to Peter, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, Peter is a, a symbol for the church. Now, Jesus prayed prayers of command all the time. I mean, you, you can't read the scriptures without noticing this. And this is one of the things about Jesus that made him unique. You know, uh, remember, that's one of the things that, that ticked off the Pharisees. It's like, what? You know, uh, who do you think you are to pray that way? But he did. <clears throat> he prayed with authority. And people saw it. What is this teaching? And with authority, even the demons leave when he commands them to go. Jesus prayed to the storm, peace, be still. And the storm was stilled. 
he prayed for the leper in Capernaum, and he said, be cleansed. And he was. He went across the Sea of Galilee to the, to the region of the Gerasenes, and he saw the man in the tombs who um, was crazy and and naked and out of his mind, and Jesus cast out a legion of demons from him. Remember, he said, come out, and the demons came out. Okay, well and good. What does that have to do with us? You may say, Jesus was God, and we are not. And I just want to want to make sure that you get this. I affirm that is a true statement. We are not God, <laughs> okay? I... <clears throat> Jesus is the head, and the church is his body. If you think that's true, say aloud, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Believers have the same Holy Spirit in us that was in Jesus. If you believe that's true, say, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Jesus said we were going to do even greater things than he did. If you believe that's true, say, yes, it is. Yes, it is. At Luke 10, 19, in our passage for today, Jesus says to the 72, now that's all of us, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Now, if what I'm getting into now, this area of authoritative prayer, makes you uncomfortable, I just want you to know something. You're in really good company. Because I was very uncomfortable the first time I experienced this kind of praying. I was in the coffee hour at Church of the Holy Spirit. And one of my people had been off to Global Awakening in Mechanicsburg and had uh, got some training and came back and <clears throat> I was just, he was asking how I was. I was complaining about some pain in, in my knee. And he, 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 just there in the coffee hour, he said, well, in the name of Jesus, I command you, knee of Clancy, be healed. No. Uh, it was Sid. Okay. It was Sid. Uh, and, uh, you know, when he did that, I was miffed. I was like, it just felt out of order. Like, who do you think you are? It was kind of, that's what I'm thinking. I didn't say it. Well, I said, I said something like, I don't, I don't know about that kind of prayer, something like that. Anyway, <clears throat> the thing is, my knee got better. And so, on the one hand, I'm a little miffed. On the other hand, I'm healed. So, what are you going to do? Right? Um, <clears throat> so, that's when I began to study this kind of prayer. Right? And I find that this isn't just something that Pentecostals do. This is something that the church for 2,000 years has been doing. Um, and if you're interested in learning about the different ways of praying, I, really, I highly recommend um, Richard Foster's book on prayer. He's got a whole chapter on authoritative prayer. <clears throat> um, now, the thing is, when I began to pray this way for people, I began to see much better results. Okay, so I came up in healing prayer uh, mostly uh, listening to the McNutt's teaching, which is excellent teaching, right? And they said things like, um, well, you know, in our ministry, when we pray for people, about a third of them get better immediately, and about a third of them get somewhat better, and then about a third of them, it doesn't seem to be any difference at all. And at the time when I heard that, I thought, I want to have those kind of results. And so, you know, I began to pray the way they prayed, and I began to see those kind of results. And then I began to um, learn from some other people who were praying in this authoritative way more frequently, and um, they were having even better results than that, like a majority of the people they're praying for were, were better immediately. And so I'm like, I want, I want that. You know, I want to see God's kingdom break in more frequently. So I began to pray that way, and I have seen more and more people healed when I do 
Now, most of us don't pray prayers of command for a few reasons, and some of them are good, and some of them are not so good. And uh, many of us have never experienced this kind of prayer. Well, if you've been around Church of the Holy Spirit for a while, you've probably experienced it. But others have seen it, but they haven't been trained in how to pray this way. And it's easy for us to think that, uh, you know, really that kind of praying is only for, like, uh, apostles or prophets or maybe, maybe your pastor, okay? <laughs> Some of you may be so worried that by praying commands rather than intercessions, you risk stepping out from your proper place and ministering in your own strength, in pride and presumption. I want to be clear, that is a real risk here, okay? It's what Foster calls going off the deep end. In truth, these are not idle concerns. There is a fine line between great faith and presumption. I'm not suggesting, please hear me, that you name it and claim it, otherwise known as blab it and grab it. <clears throat> okay, that's not what we're talking about. This isn't word of faith teaching. This is the ancient, uh, this is part of the ancient tradition of the church. Foster says, and I agree that the bigger risk, the deeper risk, is staying forever in the shallow end. I will demonstrate shortly that Jesus has delegated this authority to you so it's not presumptuous to pray this way. Foster says, your desire to maintain religious respectability may easily result in the kind of faith that is, well, tame and domesticated. So the question is, are you willing to step out in faith and try a new way to pray <clears throat> Right? Take a risk, even though the waters look deep. Use your spiritual authority. Well, I want to give you an example of how I pray this way. So I have been meeting with a group of pastors for ever since we, before we planted this church. I've just found out the, who the local pastors were and where are they meeting, and I went and I just found them and uh, met them and began to get to know them. And um, no surprise, most of them aren't charismatic, right? They're just evangelical. And they're awesome uh, brothers in Christ. And um, we, we got to know them. Um, I got to know them. They got to know me. And, uh, you know, I didn't pray this way with them the first time I met them, okay? You know, I mean, I, I took some time to build a little credibility and... <laughs> <laughs> you know, to get him to trust me and that sort of thing. And then uh, one day, um, one of my brothers, Jeff Good, who pastors Acacia Church, used to be called Christ Community Church in Ashburn, um, he said, you know, I've been having this terrible problem uh, of back pain for over a year now, and the doctors, you know, are, aren't helping me. And I said, well, you know, may I pray for you for healing? And he said, well, sure. And so I did. And praise be to God, God healed him instantly. He still talks about it uh, when I see him. It's like he's telling the people in, in, the, in the prayer group, right? So over time, what's happened is I prayed for several of these pastors and they got better. So now what happens is that in the meeting, I just pray the way I pray, okay? And, um, and they don't pray that way. And it's okay. They're praying intercessory prayers, but, you know, when it comes time and someone's healing, they're like, oh, Clancy, could you pray for this guy? <laughs> All right. Um, praise God. It's him. Now, our authority is sovereignly established, but you and I must enforce that authority in order to see it manifest. You see, to walk in God's power we have to appropriate what God has already done and then step out and actually pray for people. James 4, 7 says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. I remember we, we, uh, that was a memory verse for our kids. Uh, we had them memorize that. We are not instructed to ask God to fight Satan for us. 
Every time anybody that, that, that has any experience in deliverance ministry, for example, knows that what you do is you speak to the demon and you say, go away in Jesus' name. You don't say, oh God, please, you know, somehow get the demon out of this guy. No, it, the thing is like we have responsibility. He's given us authority and he says, you do it. You heal the sick. He said, heal the sick. That's a command. We're, we're to do it. Of course, we do it in the Lord's strength. It's not about us, but we're doing it. We're doing it. We have a certain responsibility. We have to enforce this authority, and this is one of the ways that we do it. And I see Melissa, who, <clears throat> oh, I can't say that, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> would have been a good example, but nevertheless. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, so um, you and I need to take, uh, to get over our timidity and begin to pray prayers of command if we want to see better results. Do you want to see better results in your ministry? Then try praying this way. Now, to be clear, <clears throat> when I pray a prayer of command, uh, I might say, foot of Steve be healed in Jesus' name. You know, bunion shrink, pain be gone, nerves come into alignment, whatever it is, right? I'm not commanding God to do something. No, I'm speaking to a body part. I'm commanding the body to come into alignment with God's purpose, intention for that body part, okay? I'm not commanding God to do anything. I can't command God to do anything. That's not what this is. <clears throat> You can't make prayer commands willy-nilly. And there are some people out there to teach these things like, speak to your bank account and tell it to grow. Well, don't do that. <laughs> That's foolish. It's foolish. Okay, uh, don't do it. Um, you can't command people to do your will. You're supposed to marry so-and-so. Oh, my gosh. Go there. Mm. You only command things that you've been given authority to do. You have a sphere. You have an authority. You have a special kind of authority in your household that you don't have outside your household. You have a special kind of authority in the church that you don't have outside the church. Jesus has given you a limited delegated authority to heal the sick, to cast out demons. Are you with me? Okay. Okay. Point number three, understand your position and your inheritance. Say it with me. Understand your position and your inheritance. Jesus said in Matthew's Great Commission that all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, you go and teach them to do everything I have commanded you. Now, notice, that's a part of the Great Commission. We are to teach others what Jesus taught the apostles. Do you think that might include this way of praying? Well, it does. <clears throat> In um, John's version, Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. In Mark's version, Jesus said, these signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, they shall cast out demons. They shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Beloved, that's part of our inheritance in him. Jesus is the head of the church, and he has delegated his authority to the body. The head wants to function through the body. In Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verses 20 and 22, Paul says that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, far above all authority and power and dominion. And then he goes on to say that not only is Jesus seated at the right hand of God, but we are seated with him. Like, what is that? I don't know, but it sounds really good. <laughs> it means something. We don't know what it is. It's somehow we have the authority because spiritually speaking, we are seated with him.
So that, I just want to, con- it's, this isn't a conclusion. This is, this, this is my refrain. Use your spiritual authority. I counsel people to pray their prayers out loud, even when they're alone, right? <clears throat> there is power in the spoken word. Do you believe that? Okay, now let me give you some reasons why you might want to think that way. Okay, <clears throat> the, um, God can read your mind, amen? God knows the secrets of our hearts. We can pray silently to God, and he hears us. That's good, right? But guess what? Demons can't read your mind. Angels can't read your mind. Sickness certainly can't read your mind. So I want to encourage you, when you pray, make your faith declarations. Say them out loud. There's spiritual power in it. Part of what's happening is when you speak your prayer, it encourages you to have your faith increased. Yeah, so pray your prayers out loud. The Bible tells us that when God spoke aloud, the universe leapt into existence. A great way to to pray aloud is just to pray scripture aloud. Pray scripture over your family. But what if not much happens when you pray? This is point number four. If you lack power, pray for power, persist, and obey. So say that with me. If you lack power, pray for power, persist, and obey. Okay, so these are the, what I see as the main blockages to praying with power, to seeing God move in a regular way in your prayer life. So first, pray for power. I want you to notice in Luke chapter 10, when, when he sends out the 72, as we obey the call to go before anything else, he told the 72 to pray. He said, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers into his harvest field. So before you go on mission, before you go into a meeting, you pray. Of course, I'm a pastor, so when, what, what my practice is, and you know this if you've been around me for a while, is that as soon as the meeting starts, we pray, okay? Um, sometimes you don't have time between meetings, and uh, sometimes, when you, of course, when you're in the secular world, you can't do that, so pray before your meetings. Uh, you might not be able to do that. All of us know gifted intercessors. I happen to be married to one. Praise be to God. And so the thing is that intercessors teach us how we are to, to interact with God in this way. They, they're just constantly raising up prayers to Almighty God and asking Him for the things that we need. And if you lack power, then ask for power. Trust me, before I go to the gym, I pray. Prayer is not preparation for the work. Prayer is the main part of the work. Say it with me. Prayer is not preparation for the work. Prayer is the main part of the work. Most of what we do is accomplished in the heavenlies before we begin. So to walk in power, first pray for help, right? We pray for laborers and we pray for power. Second, persist. Now, when you first try to do this, many of you are going to be discouraged by the results. Now, I may have convinced you now that you have authority to pray this way, okay? But you may not... um, because the word of God says so, but you you may discover that you lack the power of God to heal, like you're not seeing consistent results when you do that. And so if that's you, I have a word for you this morning. Keep at it. Persist. Don't give up. One of my heroes is uh, John Wimber, who uh, founded the Vineyard Movement of Churches. And um, Wimber, you know, he... 
he got saved and he read the book. And he, he read the book and he saw all the stuff that Jesus did and what the apostles did and what the 72 did. And he came to church and he said, uh, you know, well, this was a lovely service, but when do we get to do the stuff? <clears throat> and he said, what do you mean the stuff? Well, you know, healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead, the, the stuff in the book. Do you believe in the book? Oh, we believe in the book, but we don't do that anymore, <laughs> right? And um, so, but he, he did, he persisted in prayer. He persisted in prayer, and, and for six months he prayed for people and nobody got better. Nobody got better, but he didn't give up. He persisted, and he went on to have a very effective international healing ministry. My experience is similar. The more I pray for healing, the more I see healings. And the more I see healings, the more faith I have to pray for healing in the future. The more I learn about healing, the better I get at it. And if you want to learn more about how to pray this way, come on Wednesday night. Come and learn and practice. Get your reps in and you will improve. Third, obey. Holiness releases the power of God. Say it with me. Holiness releases the power of God. If you want the power of the master, you need to be under the master's authority. <laughs> Jesus said that he wants us to be his disciples, not just his followers, not just those who believe in him, but actually to be a disciple. And a disciple is someone who obeys. It's someone who follows closely and carefully. You see, our authority is delegated authority. It's not intrinsic to us. It, <clears throat> some of us lack power because we haven't obeyed God in something, some, even that small matter. If that's you, I want to encourage you to go back, do the last thing that God called you to do that you still haven't done. God's power flows much more freely through clean vessels. Now I'm going to conclude and say <laughs> that, beloved of God, you have authority over demons. You have authority over diseases. Jesus didn't tolerate these things. He just took authority over them. There was someone sick, and he, he just prayed for them. You know, and not every time Jesus prayed were they healed either. Most of the time they were. But in his hometown in Nazareth, right, he could do no miracles there, it says. Do what Jesus did. I hereby authorize you, walk in your God-given authority. If you sense spiritual darkness, tell that blood sucker to go away. Command broken bodies to be healed. I give you my blessing my permission to do that here in your home and in the marketplace. Walk in your God-given authority. Amen? Amen. Um, and so instead of closing with a prayer, we're going to do something different today. So if you're new today, this isn't something we typically do. But I thought it would be helpful to do a demonstration of prayer and then to get you Praying this way yourselves, okay? So um, Paul is, um, says, I didn't come to you with eloquence of words, but rather with a demonstration of God's power. Okay, so I'd like to ask if anyone would like to receive physical healing right now, that they just raise your hand and come forward. I haven't asked anybody. Sarah, come. Come on. Now, we didn't plan this, did we? No, no, no. Okay, well, let me get you a, a mic. I'll hold it. <laughs> Tell us what's going on. I have really excruciating sciatic nerve pain that mm. started yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah. This is new. This is new. So I just couldn't sleep all night. I can't, like, get comfortable. Okay. In any position. 
Were you doing something that caused this? I think I worked out a little too hard. A little too hard. What sort of workout? Um, like weights. Weights. Okay. And so now, is it like down your the back of your leg? Or? Yeah, it's all the way down and like tingling my toes. That's not good. No. No. Ginge, could you come up and help with this? Okay. Could you put um, your hand on, was it okay if Ginger puts her hand on your back? <laughs> okay. Marvelous. Well, um, let's pray. Yes. Um, and so when I pray this, okay, I just want to ask, would you just be praying silently for us, for healing, for Sarah's sciatica? Uh, well, I don't want to say it's her sciatica, for this pain that she's feeling in, in her leg. Um, okay, let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come, Spirit of the living God, and show us how to pray for Sarah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. So I'm just asking the Lord to give me a picture or if he can show me if there's anything else spiritual that's happening here and not just a physical injury. So I'm not sensing any kind of uh, spiritual darkness. Uh, so I'm, I'm just getting the sense that this is just a physical problem. Okay, so um, if it's okay with you, Sarah, I'm just gonna pray this prayer of command uh, for healing. Let's, let's pray. <clears throat> In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I take authority over Sarah's back and um, her leg and uh, I rebuke the pain in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Nerves of Sarah be healed. Come into alignment. I interrupt in the name of Jesus, interrupt those pain signals that are shooting down her leg. <clears throat> Stop it in the name of Jesus. Stop it. Nerves be healed. We interrupt that pain in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, if, if any of this is originating in the, the lumbar area, vertebra of Sarah, be healed. I rebuke any uh, nerve impingement in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be healed. Sarah, um, you feel anything? Like, what's going on right now? Just be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's still tight in the back, but my leg feels a little better. A little better. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. A little better is good. So that's, a, that's a, a, an indication that we just need to pray more. Okay, we're just going to pray a little <laughs> bit more. <clears throat> that tightness, whatever that tightness is in the hip, <clears throat> in the back, in the leg, be loosed in the name of Jesus. Muscles, nerves, all of that. We pray the shalom of God. The shalom of God in that. Be healed. Spine, we interrupt that nerve pain. Lord, make that clear for her and stop that right now in Jesus' name. We trust you, Lord. We trust you. Amen. So uh, what about now? Be honest. Yeah. yeah, it definitely is better. It's not 100%, but it's better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, praise God yeah. for somewhat better. Yeah. Yes, darling. Go ahead. So I don't know if this is, I'm just going to say this too. Um, but do you think there could be any connection between working too hard, like you worked out too hard? Is there a sense in your spirit at all that you've been kind of overdoing it with work? I don't know if there's a connection there. I don't know. I'd have to pray about it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Did you want to pray another prayer about that? Well, sure. Go ahead. Lord Jesus, I just pray right now for Sarah. You know everything that is on her plate. And Lord, you just lay that out for her in her quiet time that she would see those things. And Lord, if there's anything she needs to release or if she's working too hard, 
um, for something that you're freely giving her. Mm -hmm. Lord, I just pray that she would receive that freedom in Christ and release all the worries in her life to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Okay. All right. So um, I have... uh, I have an assignment for you. I'm gonna give you the assignment, then I'm gonna ask you to stand up and get into small groups of four, okay? So the assignment is you're gonna get into small groups of four, and, um, <clears throat> and, and please, um, if you're married or if you're here with your family, uh, if you're comfortable with that, please just talk to other people, okay? Because seriously, because sometimes we're just a little inhibited around a family member. Um, but uh, what we do is just ask, is there, at, let's just ask for physical healing, okay? Is there anyone here in your group of four that needs physical healing? And then someone, please, just step out and pray and try to use these, these words of command. Just take authority in the name of Jesus over whatever that is, and, um, and then after you pray for a little while, just like you saw us do, then you ask, how is it going? You know, do you notice any difference, okay? Um, so what I'd like you to do now is to stand. Would everyone stand? Come out into the aisles. Everybody come out of the aisles and get in groups of four and begin to pray for one another.
Okay, just take another 30 seconds and tie up your praying. And if you're done, you may go back to your seats. If you would tie up your prayers now, please, and go back to your seats. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Greet one another with the sign of God's peace. Please be seated. Please be seated. Our first announcement is that Jesus is Lord. Amen? If you're visiting with us, we're delighted that you're here. We have a gift for you the Church of the Holy Spirit coffee mug. We encourage you to take this mug, fill it with coffee or the beverage of your choice. We've got actually quite a bit of food out there uh, with a reception immediately following our worship, and we would love to get to know you better. And uh, also, if you would, uh, do me a favor and fill out a Connect card. Give us your contact information. One of us will follow up with you to see how we might better serve you. So I want to encourage you to just open up your bulletin and look at these uh, announcements in the bulletin. Um, So today, the Stuart Lee family arrives in the United States. Woohoo! So uh, thank you for praying for our next rector. Please keep William and Rebecca and Peter and Eleanor in your prayers. Um, and Eleanor is only four, so she's, she's going to be, you know, on this transatlantic flight. So please do uh, be praying for them. They're going to be looking for a place to live uh, early uh, this coming week, uh, so pray also for that. And then they're going to have a lovely sabbatical time uh, where they're going to be traveling around to um, different places and ministries where they uh, have uh, received uh, in the past. And uh, he'll, be, he'll be starting here with us on the 26th of May, okay? So uh, it's coming closer all of the time, and uh, please keep them in your prayers. Um, and in that regard, there's a, a workshop this coming Saturday um, in Cascades about dyna- dynamics of transition. So yes, we'll be talking about um, you know, transition dynamics for the next rector, but also this, these principles work in any kind of transition in your life. And I want to encourage you to consider that. Youth confirmation class began uh, this morning, but uh, it's not too late. Uh, If you'd like to um, be confirmed, uh, they study our catechism uh, in preparation for making a public declaration of adult faith in Christ. Um, Several other gatherings here. Uh, Dean's got a worship day coming up uh, on April 27. There's a regeneration gathering, the 20th. And Bible reading marathon is starting up later this month as well. Yeah. Uh, The Bible reading marathon. On Tuesday night, I'm the host, and those of you who speak in a language other than English, uh, you can sign up and and, and read the scriptures that night in your own language. So, uh, and if you want to read in English, you can still go to the website, which is mentioned here, and sign up. Thank you.
Thank you. So this is proclaiming uh, the word of God in the public square at the, at, the, at the courthouse. We've been doing that for a long, long time. And you might wonder, like, what good does that do? Well, it's prophetic. It's a prophetic act. We're speaking the word of God in the public arena. And so I encourage you, I get encouraged when I do it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it, might, it might be a time when you, uh, when you can brush up on uh, a foreign language that you've learned and read the Bible in a foreign language. Okay, we're about to take up our offering. Walk in love as Christ loved us, gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God. Of course, we always think about the Lord, but in uh, this season, we think about the Lord more, maybe with Good Friday and with Easter. Uh, so when I think about the Lord, it makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me in the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus lord you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you jesus lord you're worthy lord you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and the praise i just want to take a little time right now to say thank you lord for all you've done for me I just want to take a little time, take a little time to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. Thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me in the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet solid ground it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you Jesus Lord you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you Jesus Lord you're worthy Lord you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and the praise. Amen. Please rise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Hallelujah. Above ye heavenly host, 
praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and with archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. to invite you to please kneel. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we offer you these gifts, sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him so that he may dwell in us and we in him and bring us with all your saints into the fullness of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed once for all upon the cross. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you 
and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. You may be seated. Praises. 
I sing praises, I give you honor, worthy Jesus. We give you praise and all of the honor. You are our God, the one we live for. We give you praise and all of the Your presence fill this place. Let heaven come. Let your angels be released. Let heaven come. We will worship at your feet. Let heaven come. Face to face, we won't meet. Let prayed for healing. If any of you'd like to give a testimony of healing, come forward right now and share it so that we can all rejoice with you. Trifecta, I guess. <laughs> um, I have chronic back pain and I have for about 10 years and that was the first thing they prayed for and then um, I'd also shared with the people who prayed with me that I've been suffering from allergies, and um, I um, shared that when they were feeling around my legs that I'd had some injections in my knee to help with movement because I have some atrophy with the muscles there. And um, first, I stood up, and I couldn't touch my toes this morning, and I could reach my toes. And then um, they prayed a little bit more, and pain receded and then without asking the prayer for the allergies came and immediately my sinuses opened up and I can breathe and I couldn't do that this morning so it's kind of a really nice relief so um, a huge huge um, unexpected I'm going to call it a miracle because that's just been a huge pain let's give years. God the glory <laughs> I want to encourage you if you if you received uh, something, then just tell somebody. Uh, it's always it's always good to to share the mighty deeds of God. Uh, let's pray our post communion prayer together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, guard you in every way. As you, uh, as you do his will. And the blessing of God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be upon you today and remain with you always. Amen. The splendor of the King at his voice, trembles at his voice, how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.